Yellowstone supervolcano activity under the surface everyone should be aware of. KDC Wall Express UK reports latest from the USGS. Yellowstone volcano, as we know, is a source of great interest. Now a new study, due to be published, has revealed what is happening under the surface. And we've seen an uptick of activity lately, just as we saw uh, 20 years ago with the previous Ridgecrest earthquake of 7.1 in 1999. A couple of weeks later, Yellowstone had a quake uptick in quake activity and quake swarms. Same with Long Valley Caldera in 1999, had an uptick in activity because those areas were jostled, they were jolted. And the same thing is happening now. Yellowstone has increased earthquake and quake swarms, and so does the Long Valley Caldera. And all the West Coast, of course, the neighboring quakes have been jolted by the Ridgecrest earthquake. Now, the Yellowstone National Park is a tourist hotspot, as we know, visited by millions every year. It's situated over the supervolcano, which could be capable of a magnitude 8 eruption. We're talking about earthquake, magnitude 8, and eruption. So what is the underneath this supervolcano? Well, we know that it's a hotspot. The Helmholtz Association of German Research Centers reported a new study by Bernhard Steinberger and his colleagues. It will soon appear in the journal Geochemistry, Geophysics, and Geosystems. This study focuses on the modeling of the Earth's mantle, and it looks into what lies beneath the Yellowstone volcano. This is not the first time that scientists try to ascertain what lies below. We recently, in April of this year, had a map showing us that there is a magma corridor at the Mexico-U.S. border, and it's like a Y. It's the left-hand arm is going into the west coast of San Andreas and uh, the high threat volcanoes on the Walker Lane Fault System, north of Ridgecrest. And one of them, of course, is the Long Valley Caldera. And the other arm of the Y goes around the fault that goes and leads into Yellowstone. And all that is magma underneath. That was a previous study in April of this year. Now, underneath the Yellowstone volcano lies a mantle plume. That's a chimney-like structure. It spans thousands of kilometers deep to the border of the Earth's core and mantle. The mantle plumes are hot upwellings of rocks thought to originate from the core mantle boundary. And it's now thought that plumes originate, the origins lie under the Baja California area, which is more than a thousand kilometers southwest of Yellowstone National Park. Well, there you go. So this German team is actually supporting what the USGS and other American Celtic and other American geologists have come up with. That there is a mantle plume coming from the U.S.-Mexico border in the area exactly of Baja and Ridgecrest, Salt and Buttes and all that. And that's feeding the West Coast high threat volcanoes and also going towards the right hand arm going into Yellowstone. This is what they have concluded. So they think that the plumes originate, the origins lay lie under the Baja California area, more than a thousand kilometers away, southwest of Yellowstone National Park. This is, we have to keep that in mind, this is what they found. And it, of course, confirms what the American geologists have found in April. Now, previous analysis of earthquake waves had suggested something like this may be possible, but the idea of a mantle plume did not reflect the movement of the Earth's lithospheric plates, which are regions of the Earth's crust. Steinberger said, our studies contributed to the better understanding of interplate volcanism and supports the hypothesis of a deep mantle plume. However, he says, this has no impact on the risk assessment of the Yellowstone volcano. The Yellowstone volcano has erupted, as we know, three times in the recent past. Each eruption has left behind large volcanic craters known as calderas. This we're talking about super eruptions in this case, because it also had a lava eruption 70,000 years ago, 
and since then it had another 80 eruptions, just about every 6,000 years. And also 5,600 years ago it had the Mary Lake eruption, very huge hydrothermal eruption that created a huge lake. Uh, now, when such supervolcanic eruptions take place, the impact on the environment and the climate is widespread. We're talking about the super eruptions. U.S. Geological Survey revealed exactly what would happen if Yellowstone's volcano erupted again. We're talking about a super eruption. And the site says parts of the surrounding states of Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming are the closest to Yellowstone, and they would be affected by pyroclastic flows, while other places in the United States would be impacted by falling ash. Such eruptions usually form calderas, broad volcanic depressions created as the ground surface collapses as a result of withdrawal of partly molten rock magma from below. Now, fortunately, the chances of this sort of eruption at Yellowstone are very small in the next few thousand years. Eruptions of this kind are incredibly rare. That's what the geologists are saying. And they said that the last time Yellowstone erupted with a caldera forming eruption was 630,000 years ago. And by current estimates, Yellowstone is not expected to erupt for many thousands of years, from what they say. Now, as well as this volcano, the area also famed, is famed for, of course, being an earthquake hotspot. The area sees about from anywhere from three, from 7,000 to 3, 700 to 3,000 earthquakes every year. Although Yellowstone is one of the scientifically most active areas in the United States, and also the uh, geologists up to now believe that it has the biggest um, uh, uh, magma reservoir in the world. Uh, most of the earthquakes are not felt though. Yellowstone often experiences the quake swarms, which are a series of earthquakes over a short period of time in a localized area, and we're having that now. More than 3,000 earthquakes were recorded during three months on the northeast side of the park in 1985. That was the largest quake swarm on record. So this German team confirms what has been given to us here in April of this year. At the 7 o'clock position, you see that black dotted line right around Ridgecrest. That's where the plume begins, they believe, U.S.-Mexico border. And depending on the depths that you see, for example, on the 12, 11 o'clock position, you can see plumes heading towards Yellowstone and also, of course, all along the West Coast. And this is basically the same body. And let's remember the Ridgecrest earthquakes were in the Coso volcanic field, which is, of course, part of this mantle plume body that heads into Yellowstone. So what they had said to begin with when people were asking, does the Ridgecrest quake swarm have anything to do with jostling Yellowstone? And they said, no, it does not. But that does not stand because now we know that many international teams confirm what the U.S. geologists have said, that the magma corridor, the magma bodies, do connect to Yellowstone. So that explains why 20 years ago, with the Ridgecrest 7.1 quake, we had a Yellowstone quake swarm. That explains why, with this year's 7.1 quake at Ridgestone, at Ridgecrest, we have another Yellowstone quake swarm. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. 
and we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.